Hi everyone, I'm going to put timestamps on the video. At first, I'm going to play the song so you can just listen to it all the way through. And then at the timestamp, I'm going to do a track breakdown. So let's play the song.
All right, time to do the track breakdown now. So I hope you guys enjoyed that song. This is um, in a humble way. I truly mean it that way. Probably the best song I've ever made. I think this is one of my better ones for sure. Um, mostly because uh, it just kind of matches the aura and the vibe that I was going for really didn't like using those two words <laughs> that felt very influencer like um it just kind of i don't know it matches the emotion matches the feeling that i was trying to capture so i wanted to go ahead and do a track breakdown of this today so let's start with the pad that i use this is a pad from my first sample pack it's called uh the memory one which is this one and i believe we just changed the pitch of it So that kind of sits underneath the whole song in which we move to this pad next, which is this. And so that's got a filter on it as well as some sweepers we have starting off. And so I just tried to find like a bunch of vocal samples that were in the same key and I put them underneath with a bunch of reverb on them, like so much reverb to kind of build that atmosphere and the vibe that I was talking about. So you add all those things together and then you end up with this style intro. I have three things playing at once. I have a pad, I have a piano, and I have a detuned pluck. So the pianos are as follows. And we have this piano that's a little more present. And then on top of that, I added a filtered pluck. So if we go into that patch, it's right here and uh where is it all the way down here and so this is a detuned saw and a regular saw so they're both the same um except one of them has detuned the other one doesn't and so you get uh if we go here you get this sound and then i put some delay on it so you can see it has that really cool tail end and so I only put the delay on the detune. I didn't put it on the regular one. And so um, when the filter is applied to it, you start with this. And so I have an automation clip just um, on the filter. And so it uh, goes fully to the, uh, the, the, like the low pass cancels itself at the end. So it just um, becomes more present as we have the build. And so then I added some hi-hats after that just to get some rotation. Then we have this one. Obviously then put a uh, ARP underneath this guy right here. All just to add movement to the song. Um, and probably the thing that you hear the most out of all of this is the melody. So um, before I go into that, just you don't want to forget the bass as well. So I have just a detuned bass. to this patch right here. And here's how I've cut that. And then my sub is the same in pretty much every song I make. So uh, it's just uh, this patch by Virtual Riot. And then I have these um, effects on them. So you can pause the screen and uh, copy this for yourself if you wanna do that. Um, if you don't have this patch, you could always just make a square wave or a sine wave and it'll work just fine. So now let's get into the fun part, which is the vocals and the melody. So the melody is um, this saw. Hopefully it plays clearly. I'm just going to put the track right here so um, we can get it. And this is um, literally just a saw with portamento on it. So uh, it sounds like this. So uh, it's got a bunch of reverb on it and a bunch of delay right here at the eighth 
time signature and then we have some ott on it just to make it a little sharper and then i've eq'd it at 276 but why it sounds so good in the song is because it's also paired with uh that ever so famous soundstorm pluck that i use in literally every song ever which is this So those are both the same, right? So you get uh, a lot of reverb, a lot of delay, stack those two on top of each other. And then I added um, some more Nexus on top of it. And I love how that sounded. It, it, it was one of the best plucks I think I've ever done. So we got this. So now if we mute, everything and we just play those plucks hopefully when we play all of the plucks together at once this is the sound you get add that with the chords and it sounds pretty cool So uh, we have our main vocal right here, which is track 32. Silently in love with you, don't make me speak, don't make me speak. So if we look at this patch, um, it's got a bit of a formant shifter on it, and it's at negative 1.8, and that's just because um, I believe I pitched it up. Yeah, so I pitched it up 300 cents, so um, it had a lot of high end to it, and her voice sounded very... Um, like very high pitched. So I use the formant shifter to make her voice sound lower pitched because of the um, offset we did with the pitching. So um, then I just added some OTT, just kind of corrected it based off of the formantation. And now we have some delay, some reverb, right? Just to make it a little bit more ambient. And then uh, this is how I've cut it. So this is the tricky thing with vocals is um, <laughs> they're very weird on the EQ. So it's not your traditional where you place a thing and you cut it out and leave everything level. You kind of have to mess around quite a bit to get it right. So this was what ended up working. You can see it's very crazy, not your stereotypical EQing, but um, that's usually how vocals go. So uh, underneath it, I then have some other layers. Let's see what this one is. So this is a pitch down layer. And the reason you do that is to just make things sound a little wider. And so that's the same thing with channels three and four here is this is actually the same vocal. It's not even pitch changed, but I've just panned it left and right so that it's more stereo. So then you stack all the vocals on top of each other and you get this. Silently in love with you, don't make me speak, don't make me speak. So that's how all the vocals are in most of the song. The other big thing that is in this track is the actual um, vocal loop that plays pretty much the whole time, which is this. Um, so you can see it's obviously just a sample that I found that I think works really well with the track. So let's go on to the buildup. So the buildup, this is actually pretty simple. It's honestly just a lot of buildup loops. That's usually how I do most of my songs, but you can see right here, we've got lots and lots of automation clips, and these are actually turning off all of the reverb for every sound that had it. So that means that there's no reverb playing in this drop part, and we can just kind of mute everything so that the drop is really suspensed and uh, large when it comes in. So uh, we have this building pad here, uh, which is this. And so then we have the main uh, loop drop thing, like the main bass sound that's in the drop, and I just have it playing on repeat. And that basically just segues into the buildup. Uh, we have some one shots in there as well. This is one from the Soundstorm sample pack. And so then we obviously have her singing one more time. And uh, what this is right here is uh, this is a parametric EQ2 that cuts out the low ends on the master channel. So you can see when we go to bar 44 here, if we go back into that parametric EQ, 
you can see uh, the low ends is now cut at 170 hertz. So that just allows all of the sub bass to be removed from the buildup so that it can strike stronger once we actually get to the drop, um, which uh, we also have another trick using that which is the stereo enhancer so i've completely made the song mono at the buildup, and so that means the song will transition from mono to stereo once uh that 44 to 45 transition up here happens so um, that's a great way to kind of make your buildup sound a lot louder as well as um i've done a little trick here which is make the volume of the song at 71 percent all the way up until the drop, and then I turn it up to 80%, which uh, maxes it out at zero dB. So it's kind of a way to make your drops sound thicker, if you will, or wider, um, and uh, get them to be louder. So now let's focus on the drop. <laughs> So definitely the first thing we need to talk about is the chord. So um, I knew I wanted to have a chord hit in this track. So what I did was I honestly just copied the saw loop that we made, which was this guy. And I looped that on top of some detuned chords. So I made, uh, again, 16 voices here on this one. And this has 16 and one. So this is a very narrow chord there's not a lot of detune to it but this one is full detuned at 16 voices so it'll eat up the cpu if you don't have a good computer but uh, luckily we don't have to worry about that and uh, we have this chord and then i've added uh some basses underneath which um this one is a very dirty saw And then we obviously have the sub bass as well, which we went over. So uh, the the saw is actually quite simple. You can see it's just cut at 90 hertz and 30,000 like this. And this is the OTT shape. Um, just kind of messed around and that's what works best. So you stack all of those on top of each other, you get this. So then we add those in there on the side chain and uh, that's what really kind of cleans it up. And then we have lots of pads in here, for example. Oh, we've got a big clap, more pads, uh, your hi-hats, then we have this one shot, in order to make the chord stronger I added a piano underneath it which is this, just more atmospheres, we have this hi-hat loop. And then uh, we have a sweeping saw, which is really nice. Again, we went over the vocal loop. More vocals. And more vocals. So one big thing about this drop is um, you can see that there is this clicking thing. And so this is a snare. So the reason I've added the click is because that is going to strengthen the chords. So um, it's a little hard to uh, visualize that together. But so basically what you're going to do is um, find a really short snare sample. That's what I've used here. And so I use that to emphasize the high end on everything. So um, for example, this is our bass one shot loop. And I've put the snare on top of that. Let's see if I can mute these two guys. So we have this and this. And you get this. So that is kind of our main bass patch. But I've added some of my uh, own little stuff to it, which is this growl on the bottom. So we have this growl on the bottom of the bass one shot. It's a very wompy sound. And this is just to kind of widen it up. Then we just have some more layers to kind of emphasize it a little better. And then I think I actually added a piano on top of it as well. 
So I see what I've done here is I've taken the chord and I chopped it up to the um, whatever your, this would be, the rhythm of that bass drop, and we have that. And then we have another ping. So those are all playing in the pow uh, the powder. <laughs> those are all playing in the pattern of the bass. So if I mute everything but those, you can see um, how it turns out. Now let's look at some of the bass patches. So we have this thing, uh, which is, so it's this weird virtual riot preset I transformed, it's this thing. And I think there's a few more of those in here. We have uh, this one, I don't even know what it sounds like. And then we've got another one in here, which is this. And that one seems to be a variation of the first one. So um, that's honestly pretty much it for the drop. It's all relatively the same. We'll take a listen to the second drop now. This is just a different arrangement. So you can see all I did was change it from triplets into quarter notes. So it's just hitting at uh, every single bar there, as you can see, the 29, bam, 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 bam. And then I've uh, used the alt click function. So like you just select something and you hold alt and left click and you can just move it. And um, I did that to add a swing to the bass note. So it's like a little delayed in um, when it's actually hitting. And I feel like that gives a nice, uh, a nice swing to the actual drop. And then we just return to the, uh, the same pattern over here and uh, we end up finishing off the song. So uh, that's pretty much how it goes. Um, it's not really uh, too much else to go over. I think this is probably important as well before we end it off is that you can see all of these um, automation things I have. Like I have this stereo separation here, changing some, changing some stuff into mono. Um, and then, uh, we have some low cuts here in the drop. And the reason I've done this is because I just kind of listened to the drop and wherever it got very muddy, like right here, I just made a low cut. So you can see that just kind of like sweeps in that part a little better, but I would say that's about it for this track. So hopefully you guys learned something from that and I could help you guys out with your uh, production, but that's going to be it for this video. Please be sure to add the song on Spotify. It really does help me out and I appreciate anybody that does do that. But as for now, uh, that's going to do it for this video. So I'll see you guys in the next one.